I'm Kevin Berger. The Great Recession may be officially over, but the poverty rate continues to expand, especially in suburban areas around the country, and the Twin Cities is no exception. Neighbors, Inc. is one of the organizations ready to lend a helping hand in the Southeast Metro area. Executive Director John Kemp is here to tell us more about their work in this segment of Newsmakers. Thanks for joining us, John. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, when you hear about poverty in the suburbs, I think that might startle a lot of people. They might drive down beautifully tended streets, not really see it. Tell me about the kind of poverty pockets that exist in suburban areas. There are, um, there's a lot of poverty that is hidden. Um, a lot of people who are living uh, near or at the poverty level who don't want anybody to know that that's the case. We hear this all the time from, from residents and from people that even volunteer uh, at neighbors who will say to us, but there isn't any poverty in my community. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's one of the great myths. There's a tremendous amount of poverty. In fact, there is today more poverty in the suburbs than there is in the cities themselves. I think that would startle a lot of people. I think so. So there's obviously people who are very private, and I, that leads me to think that maybe they feel shame about their economic circumstances. For many people, it's a very difficult decision to make to come visit a food shelf or to seek help from an organization like Neighbors. Um, and we, we hear that from our clients on a very regular basis. We're constantly being told about about people who have come four or five times, parked in the parking lot, not been mm. able to get out of the car, mm. driven away, and then come back again because they need help and their family needs help. So they need food. Tell us about uh, how you can help them with that and what else they need. We have a variety of programs. Our biggest one is our food shelf. Uh, we now serve between 500 and 600 families a month at the food shelf. Hmm. We try to make sure that every family leaves with at least one week's worth of food for everybody in the family. Uh, for many of them, they're already on the SNAP program, the federal government program, and this provides them with what they need to get from when they run out of their SNAP benefit. 83% of people run out of SNAP benefit the hmm. third week of the benefit to the time that their SNAP benefit kicks in again. Um, so the food shelf is our biggest program, but we also have a clothing distribution program. We run a thrift store where we sell to the general public, but it allows us to provide clothing at no cost to families who have a need for that kind of service. We do a very large holiday program. Uh, we have a, a transportation program that gets people to and from medical appointments. Uh, we have a calling program that calls people who are confined to the home, and we have a an emergency cash assistance program that in some instances can provide some cash assistance to allow people to remain in their home, people who are at risk of losing their housing. Uh, we can help them remain in How do home. you provide these services? Who does the, the work that it takes to, to help folks? From our beginning in 1972, we have always done our services, provided our services through volunteers. So today we have 14 staff people, about 12 full-time equivalent people who work on staff. And our job is to organize and to make sure that the resources are there for volunteers to do their work. Last year, 2014, we had 1,678 volunteers who provided the equivalent of 22 full-time people. They're the ones that deliver the services. They run the food shelf, they run the clothing distribution, they run the Christmas program. Everything is done by volunteers. Well, with that many volunteers, they must find it a gratifying experience. We hear that a lot, too. And it took me a few years to realize that the program we provide that allows people to have a place to come, volunteer their time and their service to others in the community is just as important a uh, a program for us as the food shelf or the thrift store or anything else that we do. It gives the opportunity for people to give back to their community and that's a cherished opportunity. John Kemp, thank you so much for telling us about the work of Neighbors Inc. To learn more about their programs and services, including how to volunteer and donate, visit their website at neighborsmn.org. And that's it for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Kevin Berger. Thanks for watching.